If you're 50 plus and you've ever typed, is creatine safe for kidneys? Creatinine versus EGFR, cystatin C test, best creatine dose after 50, or how to take creatine without bloating. This is your roadmap. I'm a nephrologist, kidney specialist, and today I'll explain exactly what 3 to 5 grams of creatine monohydrate per day does in a body over 50, how it affects your lab work, creatinine, EGFR, cystatin C, and urine protein, who should be cautious, and how to use creatine to protect strength, balance, brain energy, and metabolic health without risking your kidneys. We'll clear up the biggest myth that stops people from ever trying creatine, decode the scary lab results that aren't actually kidney damage, and lay out a kidney smart, no loading plan you can start today. Who I am and why a kidney doctor is talking about creatine. In clinic, I see two patterns all the time. People afraid to touch creatine because they think it wrecks kidneys. And people who start creatine see a bump in creatinine on their labs and panic. Here's the truth from the nephrology side. In healthy adults using recommended doses, creatine monohydrate has not been shown to harm kidney function in high-quality studies. What does happen is a measurement quirk. Creatine naturally breaks down to creatinine, and creatinine is the molecule we use to estimate kidney filtration EGFR. Supplementing creatine can nudge that number up even when your kidneys are filtering normally. That's not damage, that's chemistry. And after 50, when we're fighting sarcopenia, falls, and fatigue, the strength and function benefits of creatine, paired with resistance training, are too valuable to leave on the table. What creatine actually is, and why it matters more after 50. Creatine isn't a steroid. Your body makes it, your muscles and brain use it to recharge ADP, your quick burst energy. Supplemental creatine monohydrate simply tops up that system. As we age, we lose fast twitch fibers and muscular power first, which is why a minor misstep becomes a fall and why stairs feel steeper each decade. Creatine supports the exact training that preserves power and balance. It also increases intracellular water inside muscle cells, a good thing, creating a more anabolic environment for repair and protein synthesis without adding body fat. If you're trying to lose weight after 50, keeping muscle is everything for metabolism and independence. Creatine helps you do exactly that. The kidney truth, safety, EGFR, and the lab numbers that freak people out. Let's get specific. Creatinine is a byproduct used in formulas like CKDPI to estimate EGFR. When you start creatine, your serum creatinine can rise a little, which makes EGFR look lower on paper. For many healthy people, this is a benign shift in the marker. Kidney filtration itself hasn't changed. How do we tell the difference between a lab artifact and a real problem? We look at the whole picture. Symptoms, blood pressure, volume status, and additional tests. A cystatin C-based EGFR, or a combined creatinine plus cystatin C equation, often confirms normal kidney function in creatine users. A simple urine albumin to creatinine ratio checks for kidney damage signals. In healthy lifters, it's typically normal. If you already have chronic kidney disease, diabetes with kidney involvement, a single kidney, uncontrolled hypertension, or you take nephrotoxic medications, you need individualized guidance. But for the average healthy adult over 50, the evidence supports creatine safety when taken correctly. The kidney smart way to use creatine after 50. You don't need a loading phase. Skip the 20 gram week. It adds stomach complaints and fast water weight without improving long-term outcomes. Use 3 to 5 grams of creatine monohydrate once per day, ideally micronized and third-party tested, NSF certified for sport or informed choice. Dissolve it fully in warm water or your shake, take it with a meal, and be consistent every day, including rest days. If you're smaller or have a sensitive stomach, start at 3 grams for 1 to 2 weeks, and then move to 5 grams. Normal hydration is enough, you don't need to drown yourself in water, but don't pair creatine with dehydration habits like heavy sauna sessions, high-dose diuretics, and minimal fluid intake. If you're scheduled for routine kidney labs and your clinician wants the clearest red without the creatinine bump, let them know you supplement. Some clinicians will add cystatin C or, if they request it, have you hold creatine for 48 to 72 hours before testing to reduce the marker noise. That pause isn't mandatory for safety. It's just a way to avoid confusion on paper. Medications, illness, 
and the sick day pause. After 50, many of us are on medications that influence kidney blood flow or fluid balance. ACE inhibitors and ARBs are renal protective but can slightly raise creatinine when started. SGLT2 inhibitors increase urination. Loop and thiazide diuretics can dehydrate you. None of these automatically mean no creatine, but they do mean you should hydrate sensibly and share your supplement list with your clinician. If you're acutely ill, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, poor oral intake, press pause on creatine until you're well and drinking normally again. It's simple risk management for kidneys under temporary stress. The same applies if you're preparing for contrast imaging and your provider asks you to minimize nephrotoxin exposures, follow their plan. What you'll actually feel, strength, recovery, and energy you can use. Most people don't feel a stimulant buzz from creatine. They notice more work capacity. Within one to two weeks, you're grinding out an extra rep, holding power later into a set, or finishing sessions with gas left in the tank. By weeks three to four, as muscles saturate, training volume creeps up and recovery gets smoother. Less next day soreness at the same workload, better glycogen refills, and fewer dead leg days. The intracellular water draw gives a fuller, firmer look in the mirror without puffiness or fat gain. On busy days or poor sleep, some people also notice steadier mental energy, especially if you're plant-based or typically run low on dietary creatine. Kidney concerns you've heard, and what the evidence says now. Creatine causes kidney damage is a claim that hasn't held up in controlled trials of healthy adults at recommended doses. We do have rare case reports of kidney injury where creatine was one of many factors, severe dehydration, very high dosing, multiple supplements, or pre-existing disease. In nephrology, we care about patterns, not anecdotes. The pattern with standard creatine monohydrate at 3 to 5 grams per day in healthy users is safety, with the caveat that it can raise creatinine as a marker. If you want to be extra cautious, get baseline labs, creatinine slash EGFR, cystatin C, if available, urine albumin to creatinine ratio, then recheck six to eight weeks after starting. Stable cystatin C and a quiet urine protein test tell us your kidneys are fine even if creatinine nudged up a bit. Stones, cramps, and bloating, sorting real issues from myths. There's no strong evidence that creatine increases kidney stone risk in healthy people. Hydration habits matter far more, especially if you've had calcium oxalate stones before. Cramps and dehydration have been blamed on creatine for decades, but multiple studies show creatine increases total body water, mostly inside muscle, and doesn't raise cramp risk when you hydrate normally. The fast 1-3 to three pound weight uptick some people see early is intracellular water, not fat. Stomach issues are usually a mixing and dosing problem. Fully dissolve the powder, take it with food, and avoid big single doses. Creatine forms, purity, and what to avoid. Creatine monohydrate remains the gold standard for efficacy, safety, and cost. Micronized monohydrate dissolves better and tends to be gentler on the stomach. Avoid liquid creatine and creatine ethyl ester. The latter degrades to creatinine more readily, which can spike your lab number without giving you better performance. Choose third-party tested brands to avoid contaminants, especially important if you also take prescription meds. Who should get clearance first, or skip creatine for now? If you have stage 3B, 5 chronic kidney disease, a kidney transplant on calcineurin inhibitors, nephrotic range proteinuria, uncontrolled hypertension with edema, recurrent severe kidney stones with poor hydration, or you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you need individualized medical advice. If you're heading into surgery or contrast studies, follow your team's guidance on supplements. For everyone else, especially if you lift two to four days per week, walk daily, and hit reasonable protein targets, creatine is a practical way to protect muscle and function as you age. A simple kidney-savvy plan you can start today. Pick a third-party tested micronized creatine monohydrate. Take three to five grams once daily, with a meal or your post-workout shake, fully dissolved, and stick to it. Lift progressively, prioritize balance and power work you can do safely, and aim for adequate protein intake appropriate to your health status. Share your supplement list with your clinician, especially if you're on blood pressure meds, diuretics, or SGLT2 inhibitors. If labs look odd, 
ask for cystatin C, or a combined EGFR equation, and check a urine albumin to creatinine ratio for context. Use this sick day pause during dehydration risk illnesses. That's the kidney smart way to get the benefits without the anxiety. The bottom line from a nephrologist. After 50, your priorities are strength, balance, independence, and protecting long-term health. Creatine monohydrate at 3 to 5 grams daily, no loading, consistently supports those goals and is kidney safe for healthy adults when used correctly.